I spend most days right here, painting for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and I never burn out. My back doesn't start to hurt, and my hands don't get tired. This setup works really, really well for me, so let me tell you all about it, and the product that might disrupt it. Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle. I talk often about what I paint, but I think it's time to talk about how I paint. There is a method to the madness, and this is the first attempt at a dedicated painting desk tailored specifically for me. If you remember in our old videos, I was super low in the desk, but in reality, it was the desk that was super high. I am a five foot five and a quarter inch tall dude, and my desk is three feet off the ground, and this fulfills three very important requirements for me. First, this means that while I am painting, the model is physically close to my face, so I don't squint, lean in, or slouch to try to get a better look. Second, my arms lay flat on the table. This means I don't lean on my elbows, my back stays straight, and my hands can rest flat on the table. That last part is huge, because only my fingers are working, and my arms and hands don't get tired even if my painting sessions go long. And lastly, with my table so far up, my tools are very close by. My palette is about 1 inch away from my work, and my paint cup is 2 inches, and that saves me tons of time. You don't think about it much, but every 15 to 30 seconds for the entire painting process, you're cleaning off your brush or scooping up new paint. And that pause in your flow, all of that hand travel adds up. All this adds up to a workspace that works very well for me. I know exactly how I like to paint. This video is sponsored by Cobalt Keep, a company that makes the best quality magnet ready miniature bases you can buy and some great display cases. And they have a Kickstarter for a new product, a special paint handle called the Painting Hilt Pro. This isn't your mama's paint handle. This one is rich with features and it should be interesting. This paint handle has a nice big handle, a detachable base that keeps it upright, a spot for a magnet on cap that'll hold your models and allow them to spin, and two threaded slots that can allow for the rechargeable LED light. This is a very interesting tool and I wanna give it a fair shake. But not here at this desk. This desk is set up for a very specific kind of painting, so I want to move to my presentation table, which is 2 foot 4 inches off the ground, a much more standard height, which I think this would help with a lot more. So let's transform and roll out. <laughs> Well, this should be a fun little experiment. Usually, when I paint, I have two 1100 lumen light bulbs about three inches from my work, but today I have this. So let's give it a try. The model stuck firmly to place on the magnet and it was very satisfying to spin the model. I got the lamp right where I needed it and got ready to work. I'm painting a Malifaux Arcanist Showgirls Ice Dancer because I am super duper close to finally finishing my Malifaux team. I only have a couple of models left and then I can move on to a new faction. And this light, you know, this light is not bad. Usually the most important thing about light is to have lots of it, but also to have the light bulb really, really close to the model. And so even though it's weird that the environment I'm in is pretty poorly lit, the model's not bad because there's a light bulb about one inch away. Another thing I see people doing wrong all the time with lighting is they'll put the light directly top down and then you can't really see much of anything. But if you have the light just a tiny bit outside of your eye line, then basically it's lighting exactly what your eyeballs are seeing. And that is exactly what you want. Painting on handle like this was a very new experience for me. It was like learning how to paint all over again. Luckily, I picked an incredibly challenging model for this, but you know what? It'll definitely show me any failings or annoyances in this design, as the model is annoying to paint. Malifaux sculpts are top tier, but they are more realistic and less exaggerated than a Games Workshop model, and there is less chunky detail to hide behind. And you really can't get away with just a base coat and wash. You know, this really is a detail light because it is showing me I did a terrible job of cleaning up the details. I have a bunch of mold lines that I need to fix. Let's give this a try. I left the model on the handle while tidying it up and it was fine. It was nice having the light, but I think it would have been a bit easier if I had pulled the cap off so that I could get into those hard to reach nooks and crannies. Well, I don't know how much the paint handle works for cleaning models, but I don't think I'd really use a painting handle for cleaning models. 
But these little caps are just as good as any little paint handle. And they are quick on the draw. You're getting them in and out of the paint handle. So with my models actually now properly prepped, it's time to get back to the regularly scheduled painting. I continued to work and found it okay. Once I got the light into a position I liked, I could make use of the spinning cap that let me reach 90% of the areas I wanted to reach. This Malifaux model is very, very delicate, and I think it benefited from being attached to a big honk and paint handle like this. It kept my hands off the model. But I did find that I had trouble finding good spots to brace my left hand holding the brush, and this led to me trying a lot of different techniques like bracing against my fingers and letting one finger rest on the model. I was finding it challenging to paint like this, but not bad, just different. I have been painting one way for a very long time. But this is not working. And it's not because of the handle, it's because of how I'm trying to use it. My face is way too far away from this model. I'm trying to use this table the same way that I use my normal painting table, which is raised up super high to help me with my posture. Right now, I wanna bring my face closer to the model but I can't paint like this, like a little, like a little goblin. I have to bring the model to me. So I think I need to paint the classic, you know, three points of contact and bring the model right up here to my face. I can already tell that's a lot more comfortable. Ooh, but I won't be able to paint the way I usually do. Usually I have both hands flat on the table and then the little meat of my hand resting. And that's how I paint. But now that I'm up in the air, it's a little different. I got one hand here. I guess I got the other hand here. And I have to do a little something like this. It's not uncomfortable. It's just different. But now, now I can really get in there. Interesting. Let's give this a try for a while. I found this to be better. I could easily see what I was doing and it was more comfortable. But one thing I did find now was the model is right up against my face. The water cup and paint palette are really far away down on the desk. You can't have everything, I guess, but this is how I enjoyed using the Painting Hilt Pro. I am not very experienced with painting skin yet, so not only was this a challenge with using the paint apparatus, but it is also a painting challenge. I did my best, and I can't wait to paint up the second one. I think that one will go much smoother. Usually when I paint, I get lost in my own little painting world. But with this thing, I was actively thinking about what is painting and how do I do it? It was a very interesting exercise. So I'm finding I'm trying to get this model closer and closer and closer to my face because I can't see what I'm doing because this light is just about dead. Looks like you get an hour and a half out of the rechargeable light on full blast. So let's see, my hunch is correct. Take that off and I actually have spare here. And boom, now we're talking. That is a lot more light and I can really see all of the flaws in uh, this model I've been painting. So we are back in business. I think an hour and a half is probably about right for working with a painting handle like this. Can't imagine this sort of a, this sort of a machine is set up for, you know, a, a 12 hour painting session. But hour and a half, you know, that should get you through, you know, your, your little nephew's little league game. You know, sitting, you know, sitting waiting at the DMV. Now that, this, that would be a great candidate for a painting tool like this. With my refreshed light, things were looking bright for this model. I was getting back into the groove of painting again. I had acclimated to this new tool and I felt like I was finally back to my old painting and I was using my fingers as a dry palette, which is a technique I often use, as it lets me try out my paint consistency before putting it onto the model. I was really starting to like this handle. I really felt like a pro while using it. Spinning the model with the cap felt effortless. Now, I had been trying to make this tool match my usual painting of just sitting quietly and working, but I really started to take advantage of its portability by kicking back with my feet up and my palette resting on my knees. And this was actually great. It was really fun to paint like this, and it would have been hard to pull this off without this product. Maybe I could have used a headlamp? This is when the painting got really fun for me. I found that this product really comes into its own once you get silly with it. Usually painting is boring, but with this, I can really do just about anything while painting. Having my light attached to the model and handle means that I can be effectively painting while spinning in a chair, which if you have never been painting while spinning, you have to give it a try one of these days. 
Even my dog came to join me, and with the freedoms I had with the Painting Hilt Pro, I could cuddle with her while getting some more highlights in the places that mattered on the model. It definitely won't replace my usual painting setup, but I am finding it really enjoyable. Well, I've been painting for many, many hours now, and I'm just about done, and I can definitely say that painting with this handle has been a very new and unique experience. But before I get to my final thoughts, I think it's time to take this Malifo Arcanist Performer Minion Ice Dancer off of the stand and do some final special effects. It wouldn't be an EOB video without tackling the base, so first I water down some brown and glaze this over the coffee stir sticks that make up the base. I used some green and magenta to break up the colors of the wooden slats and to make sure it looked more interesting. Then I did a black wash of watered down paint over top of everything to darken and blend them. Once that was all dry, I decided to make up some snow. I took some Army Painter Battlefield snow and added a few drops of gloss medium. I mixed this together into a snowy paint and I spread this onto my model using an old paintbrush. The Ice Dancers have a magical ability to create ice, so I wanted to look like this huge icicle has magically formed out of the ground, and so I used my snow paste to blend it in. Like the magic has exploded out from under her feet. This was looking good, but it could use a little more glitter, so I will be finishing it off with some secret weapon snow, which is made of crushed glass. I sprinkled this over the army painter snow while it was still wet. Then I got some Elmer's glue and spread this onto her legs. I sprinkled more snow onto the glue to blend her into her magical snow environment, and I also did this to her hands. And once that was all dry, a trick I like to do with snow is to give it a faint blue tint by spraying it with some blue wash. This makes the snow look cold. It is a little cartoony, but hey, this is a magical ice dancer who can freeze stuff with magic, so it's fine. Now with my super cool base complete, it was time to paint the rim of the base black. Well, this model will make a fine addition to my Malifaux collection and bring me one step closer to getting out from under my pile of shame. Time to put it with the others who are in this lovely Cobalt Keep display case I made into the Star Theater stage. Watch this video to see how I did that. So, what do I think of this paint handle? Is this going to replace my current painting setup? No, but I still really like it. This tool definitely serves a purpose, and that purpose is to help you paint in environments that are not already perfect for painting. Making this video really taught me how spoiled I am with my custom desk setup. It is not that easy to paint just anywhere, and I think this tool definitely makes that a lot easier. With this product, I was able to comfortably paint in bed. I mean, what else do you need to know? The light is nice and bright on its highest setting, the handle is comfortable, and the spinning cap is a game changer I found to be very intuitive and easy to use. I find myself spinning the model subconsciously to get better angles or to help with brush strokes. As of now, the Kickstarter for this product is live, and if anything I have shown off in this video intrigues you, then head on over to that webpage to give this product a look for yourself. 